controlling dust, flies, and other contamination. Well, we talked a bit about contamination earlier, about making sure you clean before you sand, especially old top coats and things like that. Um, we talked about the two cloth method of cleaning and, you know, we've got silicons are a problem with contamination. Where do silicons come from? They come from silicon sealant. People are still obsessed with using silicon sealant. It's a fraction of the price of a polyurethane adhesive like Saba or Sika in the in the chandlery. But they do cause paint contamination, those fish eyes. They cause all sorts of trouble. A couple of other things, tractors going around the yard, they have, they, diesel has um, has silicons in it. Um, uh, teak uh, or tropical hardwoods, they have contaminants in them and they can cause you a lot of trouble. So clean down and worth cleaning down. If you're going to, you know, don't clean down the night before you're going to paint, clean down the morning, uh, go away, get your paint ready, make sure you're all set up. And by that, make sure it's all dry and the solvents all evaporated, then start painting. But, uh, but do clear, clear, go, go, um, uh, do get yourself well prepared, do the cleaning before you paint, make sure it's dry. Sometimes if you've got an old silicon sealant, the, the tray will always dig them out and they'll even mask that area, uh, mask that area off and then put another bead of a decent sealant back over after they finish painting just to keep the silicon well away from the job. Flies, can't do much about flies. If you're, 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 if you're unlucky enough to get a, get a swarm of flies come past you as you're painting, there's not much you can do. The only tip we can do is don't chase them around the paint with your finger. Leave them in there. The poor little souls of, uh, usually end up um, uh, um, doing backstroke or, or staying on their legs, at which point when you flick them out when the paint's dry, you've just got a few little legs in there um, or, or the, a few tips of wings. But if you if you um, if you chase them around with your finger, um, you tend to leave your 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 your, uh, your fingerprint in the side of the boat, and it usually tends to be a bit messy. <laughs> so uh, controlling dust. Oh, that's the big question. We mentioned about low humidities creating dust earlier. That is something to watch. It's pretty rare. We're generally quite a humid country, um, but um, but it does happen. Um, um, and you can't do a lot about someone uh, uh, racing around the marina, kicking up dust on the tracks and that going across your boat. But um, um, the dust you can control. If you can wet down the, the area around the boat or around what you're doing, or if you're in a garage, you can wet the area around on the floor. Helps keep dust down. Um, the, uh, if you're in a garage or you're, you're, in, you're underneath a little uh, little put up tent or something like that, you can quickly mask out. You can get some masking films or you buy them online or from the supplier that's put you onto us today. And um, masking films, they're quite good. They're quite quick and easy ways of masking out your garage and keeping the dust down. So water on the floor, it does, it does push the humidity up a little bit, but it tends to stabilize um, and keep um, uh, try and keep the airflow down. Again, that also produces dust. Um, the other thing, um, there's a picture of one there as a tack rag. Uh, this is a t thing that the pros use. You can buy tack rags again. Your supplier that's put you on probably sell them. Um, they come all folded up. Unfold them. Unfold them completely. They fold into a big sheet and then scrunch up into a ball like you can see and use them there and keep on rotating them around. They're designed to work like a big spider's web. Um, a little trick if you can find some cotton um, uh, cotton rags. Uh, the old traditional tack rag of, of times gone by was a little bit of thin varnish uh, on a tack rag and they'd wipe it gently. Very thin, lots of thinners in it, just a little bit just to make the rag sticky and they'd wipe that over the surface. Um, uh, careful you don't go too much varnish on it otherwise you'll leave nasty streaks on it. But that that is the traditional tack rag. Now people make them and they use them all the time. So um, uh, keeping gusto. The other thing is if you're painting in your garage, and you've just finished and you go fantastic don't slam the door behind you <laughs> all those beams and that that that, that windsurfer that you haven't used for the last five years above your head they're all covered in dust and as soon as you slam that door that will come down on your job oh one last thing we'll be guilty of this when we do some varnish panels at the boat shows if they're small panels we tend to hang them upside down dust tends to fall down so if you hang something upside down it don't doesn't get dust in it but um, can't do that with a boat but you can do it with the washboards when you're doing them at home <laughs> Right, um, Chris. Uh, uh, see if you, Chris comes and joins us again. Have we, have we got any questions uh, come up now? Um, yeah, we've had a couple of questions about. Uh, you mentioned putting the um, when you heat the boat overnight the night before, putting the mm. paint in with the boat. Um, we've had a few questions about if the boat's outside, can you heat the paint to warm it up? Um, and does that help it flow out? Yes, it does. But remember, as soon as you put the paint on the side of the boat, there's a lot of people that swear by heating the paint up. Um, you know, if it was that good to do, we'd probably test it. The problem is, is that you can cause a bigger problem with dew point, with warm paint on surfaces. But the reality is, is it will help a little bit. But the um, um, the, the reality is, is you need to um, uh, you need to add 
um, uh, you need to add more thinners to make the paint runnier is the better way of doing it. So we talked about paint because as soon as you put a film, film, thin film of paint on the side of the boat, it will just adopt that temperature. So if your paint is going to become thick and then not run so much, so the best thing to do if it's cold, the paint is thicker, we add more thinners. We increase the amount of thinners in it. It then gets to the same viscosity as it would be warm and it flows out and looks lovely. Word of warning, because you're putting more thinners on it, when it's dry, there's less paint on the surface. When there's less paint on the surface, you get less protection. I know you all think that we're trying to get you to put three coats of paint on because you think we're trying to sell you a little bit extra paint. Actually, it's about microns of thickness and any paint chemist will tell you that if you've got a certain film thickness, which is 50 microns, which is 0 0.05 of a millimeter, uh, 50, uh, 0, 0, 0, of a millimeter, um, the, um, uh, that will give you the ultimate protection against UV. So two coats of paint might look shiny, it might cover the undercoat, but it does uh, it, it will not protect the boat nearly as long as it should do. Um, and um, if you put lots of thinners in, the paint film goes in, so you might have to go another coat of paint over the top to get your film thickness. So something worth watching. Use the thinners to adjust it, but um, but remember, if you're adding a lot of thinners, it'll flow beautifully, but you will need to put more paint on. I, hope, I think that answers the question, does it, Chris? Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's a good explanation. <laughs> Anything else? Uh... Yeah, I've, I've, I've got a question about a completely different product just come in. So, um, yeah, we'll push past that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to go.